G'day guys, M Tim Tan here. Welcome to the second tutorial in the Octane Render tutorial series. In this tutorial, we'll be going through the interface, um, mostly for the panels, a uh, few buttons, and um, yeah. So let's get to it. So, um, well, the first thing you will open up to is uh, this blank a blank blank everything so just uh... let's swear where, where should we start alright let's start here this is the graph editor this is where you will mainly be interacting with your obj your materials parameters values everything over here is the node inspector this is a more detailed version on when you click the node. When you click a node a certain parameter shows up here. Um, some people, um, I at the beginning I mostly worked in the node inspector but um, um, until I start working in the node graph it just became so much more flexible. Over here is your outliner. It's pretty much a library of all the stuff that's in it in ex an explicit detail and if you click on it um, it will show up here it's very handy when you're working with huge massive set um, um, like massive projects um, live database live database as I said is a online uh, is an online tutorial library that pretty much just has everything you need it's very it's just very good there's different um you can di get different uh images of that that is the your outliner and this is the render view this is where all the magic happens this is where you'll be into this is where you'll be interacting with your pretty much your render, where the how you control your camera, your settings, everything. So now that's all your panels. So your graph editor, node expector, your outliner, and your render viewports and the default view. So now we're going to go through how you can save your interface the way you want it to. What do I mean by that? Well, in each panel you see this um, wrench thing. In this wrench thing you can um, move certain icons and place your toolbar how you want it to. So for instance I can move this to the bottom, to the left, and to the right. I prefer it to be on the top. So once I press on the top, I press OK. That's good. It saves it. Um, same with here. Um, top, bottom, left, and right. Again, I like to put mine on the top. Press OK. Now, and the same with all of them. Now, with the icons, you can also change and place the icons. Now, for instance, um, I rarely use the uh, ruler so I'll put that here I'll take it out I rarely use uh, these few buttons here uh, yep I really use those uh, I rarely use that just place some keep placing them out and I don't use these and yeah so and I can also add stuff into it so um, just say alright well let's just say I want to put pl place this back in all I have to do is drag it out or I can move it to a certain area so around here if I can just get it like that yep um, what else move that back there I can it's very customizable so that is a good add-on so press OK and that's that and you can do it with do the same here vice versa now once you've have your interface the way you want it 
you then go to file now remember do not have your project loaded here because you're going to go to file save as default now if you have a project in here and you save it as default every time you load octane render up it will open to that scene and you don't want that so um that is your customization now we are now going to go through your preferences now your preferences is extremely important to um know your octane live settings your default defaults and controls your QD devices and your obj mesh imports so the first thing you open up to is your octane live account um here it will show your octane live user id your credentials um your full name your your um avatar name and your copyright um, so you can also deactivate and reactivate your license you can also activate and deactivate your license on the websites so if you want to move to another computer and lo download the latest version there you're going to have to deactivate your com your version here it takes about an hour to and to activate it so after an hour you can then activate it on the other computer on the website if that makes any sense so that's your Octane Live settings. Over here is your defaults and controls. So you have your default render resolution, um, your viewport control mappings. Over here you can pick which um, control controls to go around your to move around your environment. So over here there's a total selection to the there's a standard Octane render, Maya. 3s Max, Soft Image, every one of these. Um, it's very handy, very customizable. I usually just stick with Octane Render. And over here, you can customize it yourself how you want it to. Left mouse button, middle mouse button, everything here. And also, you can uh, click on, you can change where your um, project path is. So let's just say I'm not gonna change this to my desktop okay my mesh same desktop texture path I'll put that texture path so you press OK go to file open your mesh file new material no, you go to where is it? Textures, images, and here it is. It opens up defaultly to the areas where you assigned it. So um, now, where else? So that is your. So that is the defaults and controls, resolution, your the way you want to interact in your scene, and the default locations. Next is your QD devices. Here it will. Here you can tell which which ones you want active and not. I'm currently running on one GTX 580. If you want to add your um, another one, all you have to do is press Add, and you have two of your graphics cards working. If you want to remove it, you press Remove, and only one will work. Add, remove, add, remove. Now to make sure that nothing goes on, make sure your SLI is disabled, alright? SLI, if you have SLI enabled, it will either not work or won't work to its full potential, alright? Make sure you disable your SLI. It also states whatever, what CUDA, current CUDA version you have and your runtime version. Now, in your device information, it will state um, your your specifics on your CUDA device, your global memory size, multiprocessors cores, clock rate the works. And also, and uh, here it has your device ma memory usage. It tells what um, engine. So let me just get a, a example here. All right, so right now I am uh, using, my engine is using 22 kilobytes. The render target is about nine megs, geometry, of my scene is about 17.5 megabytes and my nodes the nodes the is using 5 kilobytes and my image textures is using 
68 megabytes. So that is how it works out. Now if I wanted to uh, bump up the resolution a bit, now where is it? Now you need to keep an eye on your render targets or your engine runtime. So let's just say I want to change this to a full standard HD resolution. Let it load up. Go back to and as you can see your render targets and your render target has been significantly um, added to your memory. So it's just a little library on how, what, what your GPU is currently running. So that's why it's good to get the 3 gigabyte cards. Now, your OBJ, let me just close this, your OBJ mesh import. This is how you want your OBJ mesh import to uh, the materials that you want to import in when you've imported your OBJ mesh. Now, I would suggest you leave this as default unless you need to change your... Uh... So, um, if you want to know, um, it has all the um, stuff. If you want to import your MLT, if you want to import the Fuse Glossy, Rough or Specular, import textures, um, if you want to import um, your diffuse as a image or a float image, float image or an image, um, and also it has your glossy specular scale, and if you want to change your meters, your OBJ file units, um, just say you're working in May or 3ds Max, and there's a certain there's a unit there's like one unit is equal to about one meter, I think, and you have to convert it. Yeah, there's um you can change it to uh, you know millimeters to to meters or meters to meters and everything. I like I said at the beginning, it's good to just leave this the way it is. So that is your Octane render preferences. And yeah, so uh, that's the uh, end for the interface tutorial. Um, I tried to do it as much as detailed as possible. If any questions regarding the the, uh, the tutorial, please message me or leave a comment. The next thing we'll go on is um, imports and navigation.